Welcome to the Phase World Podcast. Engaging conversations that cross the boundaries between business, art, and the digital world. Hi, this is Fei Wu, and I am the creator and producer for Phase World Podcast. It's been a while since I released a new episode. The last one actually went live before the new year of 2016. Since then, a lot has happened. All very good things for me and for Phase World. I spent the month of January incorporating Phase World, which is now called Phase World Inc., a consulting service that helps businesses and people. Specifically, I help them start a new business or grow an existing one, establish and enhance a personal brand. Or transition from school to work. The last one is probably most relevant to students and young adults who are starting their professional career. To learn more about this new change, you can visit phaseworld.com and click on the navigation that says "Work with Fay" in the left-hand navigation. I've also brainstormed a few ways to make Phase World podcast better. After all, the growth of my podcast and people I've been able to connect with around the world really enabled Phase World Inc. to become a reality, rather than just an idea I've been contemplating for over five years. Starting a company turned out to be not that hard. For that reason, I've also begun writing posts about how to incorporate a company, and the general startup process. To bring Phase World Podcast to the next level, I realized that I need to treat it more like a business. Therefore, I'm modifying the release schedule of my podcast to be biweekly, that is, every other week on Wednesdays at around noon time. So once you subscribe to Phase World on iTunes or Stitcher or whichever app of your choice, new episodes will be delivered to you automatically on your phone, and you can listen to it during lunch hour or after work commute. Now, the first two guests for me to welcome to Face World Podcast 2016 are Karen Fan and Felege Gebru, who are only 19 and 20 years old. Karen is currently a sophomore at MIT, and Felege is a junior at Brown. I met them about three years ago at Newton North High School through a wonderful art teacher named Sue Brooks, and about two years ago, Sue helped form an event team. That functions very much like a small design and technology firm, where every kid comes to the table with a specific role, either as a designer, as an engineer, or product manager. After a year of hard work, they entered into the Lemonson MIT competition and went to the White House Science Fair to showcase their invent team project to President Obama. When I received an email from Mrs. Brooks about this update. I almost fell on my chair at work. So, as you can imagine, I had to invite them, both of them, to Face World. The conversation lasted about an hour. Based on some of you, my lovely listeners' feedback, I decided to break down this episode into two parts, about thirty minutes each. Part one dives right into their visit to the White House. What was it like for them to meet with President Obama? Presenting to him and then having an intellectual exchange, we also covered questions about how Invent Team was initially formed and this very key person who turned out to be their art teacher, Mrs. Brooks, who initiated a program that forever changed their lives. Hope you enjoy this episode and look forward to hearing your feedback. So please welcome Karen Fan and Felege Gebru. Before we we jump in,、mm -hmm. uh, do you guys mind introducing yourselves、uh, since we haven't met in three years? <laughs> <laughs>、uh, yeah, I could I could start off.、Oh, okay. um, I'm Falago Gubru. I am a student at Brown University, studying computer science and visual arts right now. Awesome. Questions already, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs>、right. uh, hi, I'm Karen Fan. I'm a sophomore at MIT right now.、Um, I'm studying. Mechanical engineering and computer science. Awesome. First of all, why are you studying science and art together? And is it like different for you, Felege? Um, 
it's just the two disciplines that I um, that I really connected with with my in my experience in high school, um, and I think that the crossover between the two is where I really find my niche, and that's where I um, really want to do something. So, what type of art are you are you studying? Um, there's no track that you follow specifically, um, so you cover the basis like traditional um, art and whatnot. But what I'm really interested in is uh, digital illustrations, and um, I I've recently gotten to animation, which is cool. I think that might be like the call. <laughs> wow, what type of software are you using? Uh, Maya, Maya, wow. which is. Feel free to thing. jump in and ask him any questions. I think that's, <laughs> the, that's the beauty because you, you know, Karen for like a have gone to high school together, Newton North High School, which we'll get into in a moment. And Karen hasn't met Falege for a year, a couple of years at this point? No. Half a year. Half a year. Half a year. Feel free to, you know, jump in. Mm -hmm. It's like really... But it feels like forever. Oh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> so, back to you, Karen. Like, I feel mm -hmm. at MIT... Um, people, everything, everybody in the world uh, knows very well about Brown. More recently, it's so, mm -hmm. actually, let me tell you a story. Mm -hmm. When I when I was studying English in Beijing, mm -hmm. um, we had teachers from all around the world, but very often Harvard, MIT, and they were like the early adopters in terms of traveling to Asia, teaching English mm -hmm. and all that, and all of a sudden we have this gentleman, he was only 19 years old, with long blonde hair, <laughs> And exactly, he's like, I'm from Brown. And all of us are like, where's that? It's in, it's in Rhode Island. Is that a state? Where is that in the U.S., you know? So anyway, back to Karen, you know, the studying at MIT, in particular, mm -hmm. majoring in computer science, me mechan mechanical, mechanical engineering, engineering yeah. very, very challenging. Like, why did you pick both majors instead of one? Mm -hmm. Well, so... Um, Actually, Meki has a flexible major, so you can basically take the core classes in mechanical engineering and then choose and pick which uh, concentration, per se. So, for example, I chose computer science for now, I guess. <laughs> Still choosing. But, um, so the, what that means is I'm taking a bunch of core classes in Meki, and I get to take like uh, six plus classes in comp sci or any other major, major I choose. Mm. So... Um, yeah, so I guess more sp specifically, I'm interested in product design and mechanical engineering, mechanical engineering mm -hmm. and uh, more user interface, human-centered design. Oh, yo. In computer yeah, science. Yeah, what, I'm taking, I'm taking, right? I'm, I'm actually TAing like a user interface class um, right now, which is cool. Oh, so jealous. Yeah. Yeah. We have to continue this conversation because uh, maybe <laughs> all three of us, mm -hmm. um, I, in case you, you guys haven't studied about my background or my sort of profession <laughs> extensively. So outside of podcasting, being a podcaster, <laughs> <laughs> so I work at Arnold Worldwide and mm -hmm. I, my role is called a digital producer. Mm -hmm. So, you know, traditional producer will manage like TV ads, print mm -hmm. ads, and mm -hmm out of home, those things, mm -hmm. right? Um, and what I do is anything on the internet, you know, from websites to web apps. Mm -hmm. So which means I work with a team of people who are designers, mm -hmm. digital designers, and your, in your case, you know, product designers, mm -hmm. UX, user experience designers. Mm -hmm. UX is an area I'm just so fascinated with, mm -hmm. you know? And so... Oh, that's cool. <laughs> I, I try oh, man. <laughs> And at some point, I want to hire people I want to work with. Mm -hmm. I'm just like writing down your names. Like, oh, maybe when I start my own company. Well, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Sign up. Yeah. Hopefully, I can still afford you. So I, I have to talk to you when you're young. <laughs> yeah. LinkedIn and Google call me. It's like, yeah. hey, I got a few million dollars lined for these kids. <laughs> no chance for you. <laughs> um, so the, what triggered this get-together... Mm -hmm. And I wish I, I reached out to you guys earlier, mm -hmm. but um, so Mrs. Brooks mm -hmm. reached out to me uh, and sent me a lovely email, basically, you know, Faye, remember these kids that you brought to Sapien years ago? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you came to, quote unquote, mentor them. And it was <laughs> such a lovely email, even though I feel like I saw you guys like once a quarter uh, uh -huh. helping out with the event team. And here's a picture of them with President Obama. So... I was at work. <laughs> I was at work standing there, and yeah. literally, I just felt like 
I just like fell off the <laughs> earth. And, you know, there's so many moments where you feel like it's dream come true, where you get to uh, experience a moment that's so profound. Yeah. And, you know, you feel like, because for me, you know, I didn't expect anything out of, I just want to be like, this. that was my first engagement with a high school as an advisor mm-hmm. and oh, okay. working together with students, something I always love to do. Mm-hmm. But just once again shows like the potential of young people. Mm-hmm. So uh, I guess it's a question for both of you. Could you like walk us through like, what was your experience at the White House specifically, and then I'm gonna dial back to how it actually happened. <laughs> um, so it was it was stressful. <laughs> it was so stressful. Like, Why? <laughs> we had oh my god, uh, making sure that like the prototype worked and everything, oh, and like because yeah. we had to make a separate kind of prototype instead of we had to make like a smaller version of it and getting that to work. And sometimes it would work and wouldn't, and like it was yeah. um, just. That whole ordeal was um, was stressful, and the fact that the president of the f- yeah right. the leader of the free world was like gonna touch our hands, mm-hmm. speak out of his mouth. Those words would enter our ears, and we would have to respond back with ver- articulate, yeah, articulate intelligence, <laughs> yeah, intelligent. <laughs> so much pressure. Respond. Oh my! I was so nervous. I was so nervous oh, when he when I heard his voice in the other room. I was like, my heart dropped. <laughs> My heart dropped, and then my hands were like really sweaty when he came, and I was like trying to wipe them before he got there. <laughs> to the handshake, yeah. <laughs> dead fish. Oh, also, <laughs> this man has the smoothest skin I have ever oh, felt. He's pretty tall too. Yeah, tall. He's pretty tall. Great skin. You know, I wish I wish I asked him how he moisturized. That was like one of the. Th- that's my biggest regret, like asking him how he moisturized. Yeah, he had like warm, dry hands. Mm-hmm. It was like a good, <laughs> solid handshake. Oh, that's yeah. amazing. I think we're glorifying it. Because it was all, but it was it was it was a solid. Yeah. It was a solid. <laughs> how, how tall is uh, President Obama? Six two. He's pretty tall. Yes. Yeah, Over. I don't. I don't yeah. know. I'm guessing. He's he's pretty pretty tall. Tall. <laughs> you can compute. Yeah. yeah. Information. <laughs> yeah President yeah. Obama, could you stand next to the door? <laughs> <laughs> what well, moisturizer really do you use? Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. And wow. And uh, we actually got like to talk to him about the the project for. Mm-hmm. I can't. I lost track of time. My sense of time was. Off. But, we, <laughs> but we we talked to him mm-hmm. like he, he was actually responding to back to the project and it was cool that we like um he didn't get to talk to everybody um that was at the science fair it, it was dependent on where you were placed and we were lucky enough to be placed like in the in the room next to it so we yeah. we had the chance to talk to him which was cool he kept it really conversational which was super nice easy he, to talk yeah, to yeah ask us questions make sure like both of us talked what kind of questions nice. did he ask like do, if anything you could recall he, <laughs> uh, he asked like, oh, he asked like, oh, so is this gonna be implemented now? Um, and then we told him that we were sending off the the product to sister school. yeah to our sister school in Ethiopia. I was like, oh, that's cool. And I can't remember if it was him or somebody else that suggested that this this doesn't have to be just in developing countries. Mm. So first of all, tell it? us what what are we talking about here? What prototype? What prototype oh. are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> you like, remember the spiel? You, you, oh, yeah. Yeah. Go for it. <laughs> Karen so, seems to be. Oh, She's okay. Let me, let me recall. So, we designed an invention for... T- oh, okay, so, should I talk about the program first or the invention first? Let's talk about the program. Whatever you feel. Oh, okay. So, um, we're trolling online. <laughs> we found the program called Lumosa MIT. And um, basically, this program works with high school students... Uh, and lower and middle school and upper but mainly has like um, we're focusing on high school students so they, uh, they seek to inspire entrepreneurship and mm-hmm. inventions mm-hmm. Uh, creativity innovation that sort of thing in high school students and how they do that is by offering a grant of up to 10k to high school teams that seek to invent a invention <laughs> <laughs> create an invention yeah yeah so we went through this app- application process. This lasted for like two years, a year? Yeah, yeah, so it took us like an entire summer to... Mm-hmm. Oh my God, I forgot about that uh-huh, whole uh-huh. deal. Uh-huh. We spent an entire summer like under Miss Brooks. Yeah, Miss Brooks worked so hard to, to mm-hmm. put that proposal out. Um, and we spent an entire summer sending that out. And researching. The, yeah, researching. Yeah. Like I find, remember. Yeah. Research. That's, that's where you came in. That's where, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's yeah, when I you remember. were helping us out, yeah. 
if you yeah. remember, there was, I remember the deck of a proposal. Do you remember? <laughs> oh, we there don't, was like, we, how can we forget? Binder, <laughs> I, I mean, Miss, Miss, Miss Brooks, Brooks is so organized too, and she crazy. like, very she thorough. In, I mean, it, I'm a project manager <laughs> slash producer, so I just, I know like the mm-hmm. budgeting issues, mm-hmm. the, you know, oh yeah you know that like, I, I mean people on you know sort of listening to this can't really see our gestures but there was, <laughs> there was hundreds of pages like uh, oh, you know yeah. like a yellow like a phone book yeah you know and, <laughs> and, then, and then everybody's Super in charge happy. of something we're yeah. talking about high school kids like between the age of i don't know 14 15 all the way to about 18 years old mm-hmm. on your team mm-hmm. but they're still kids everybody is like you know, like a minor, you know, yeah. it's, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah. What, what were your uh, roles on that specific project? If you can still recall, <laughs> I'm sure you can. So I was technically administrative lead, um, but we basically spread out a lot. Because, I mean, within engineering, we had separate teams and um, we're all in charge of our little thing. But we switch over every so often. For example, mm-hmm. I was part of the... Arduino team in the beginning, mm-hmm. and then after I switched to solar, and yada yada yada. Wow, what, what was your role? Same situation. I was uh-huh. technically yeah. the tech, the technical leader, um, but yeah, we sw- we switched around um, our different jobs, and the the project itself was partitioned into engineering and design. design. So that was I thought that was the coolest part. <laughs> that was the coolest part. Uh-huh. That's I think that's what kind of also like kind of pushed me to take a route of both design and yeah. technical you know mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. that combination man is is where it's at and that's where the future is really mm-hmm. yeah no, i i completely that's interesting i completely agree um you know like <clears throat> i come from a very artistic family like mm-hmm. everybody on my mom's side of the family are musicians and artists and everybody's crazy yeah and they know it <laughs> and i for some reason i think part of Part of this out of my own ego that I decided to study computer science. Mm -hmm. Not just that, I I also felt like if I could do that Mm -hmm. when I was seventeen or Mm -hmm. eighteen, if I could do that, I could do anything Mm -hmm. because everybody else around me in that college started programming and like an Apple Gen two, you know, (laughs) like they're still in diapers and stuff. Yeah, Yeah. (laughs) you know, for me, computer in general is like this brand new thing. Mm -hmm. So I felt like I was already behind Mm -hmm. as a freshman, Mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Um, so, oh, that's interesting. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah for you guys, it's, it's very different. I mean, with this project and even before that. Mm-hmm. So, but I have to say that being able to do what I do now and still feeling at ease, you know, mm-hmm. in my own career, mm-hmm. a lot of that is due to the combination of my sort of art background mm-hmm. and then forcing myself uh, in sort of injecting myself into the world of computer science uh-huh. and technology. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, like I think these type of like derailing it's kind of interesting (laughs) because part of the theme as i'm going to set up the podcast is really about your experience at the white house Mm -hmm. i feel like that's a highlight right Mm -hmm. and but that isn't all the experience we're going to talk about there's that high school track and then now you're in you're in college so um I think to give people a, just a slightly better sense of what that project is about. One of the mm-hmm. moments I remember so clearly was when I first witnessed the prototype working at Newton North High School <laughs> in the hallway, if you remember, it was very high ceilings oh. and, and people were testing it out. People were asking questions, all of us mm-hmm. advisors standing there like, what if this, what if that? I remember mm-hmm. there's one thing. Oh. Just like after we build the prototype, mm-hmm. and it's, was it in Ethiopia? Like, was yeah. it? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, yeah. great. Um, and, you know, what if people steal it? What if mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. taken apart yeah. on the street? What could it do? It, mm-hmm. You know, and people are really like, oh, what, what do we yeah. do? So yeah. tell us about, like, what was the invention about? Like, what, what did it do, actually? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so primarily, we wanted to decrease the rate of road traffic fatalities in developing countries, specifically Ethiopia, which had one of the highest rate of road traffic fatalities. So um, in order to do that, we did a bunch of research on the country itself. Uh, We had a mentor who sent us video clips from Ethiopia, and um, super helpful. His name was Sega. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, It was, I think it was Miss Brooks' friends or something. Mm -hmm. Uh, But basically we looked at video and we thought that a big problem was that drivers didn't follow the rules of the road, per se. Mm-hmm. So um, we want to put the power back into pedestrian hands and allow them to make an informed decision of when to cross a road or not. 
Mm-hmm. And also we saw that a lot of cars' headlights were broken, traffic lights weren't working, uh, stuff wasn't in the greatest condition. So we decided to make a improved traffic system, mm-hmm. uh, more of a thing to augment onto the existing system. Um, so what it does is that it senses the speed of approaching vehicles and tells the pedestrian whether it's safe or not to cross a road, mm-hmm. uh, depending on that speed. So would the pedestrian have enough time to cross a road? If it's yes, then it glows green. No, it glows red, mm-hmm. basically. And it's activated by a pedestrian swiping their hand. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's going to be like solely solar powered. Wow. So it's independent of any like existing electrical conduits. or So it doesn't have to depend on the community. Wow. May yeah. I ask if that has been I- I implemented mm-hmm. or is there a plan to try something like that, even um, in the local area? Or the, I believe the current status is that is, um, we sent the parts over mm-hmm. to our sister school in Ethiopia. Wow. And we're, we sent them like instructions on how to assemble the parts so that they have a full understanding of the product before yeah. they try to implement it. So I think... That's the current status right now. Yeah. So we send them all the <coughs> yeah we send them all the indie components and they, uh, told them how to wire it up, some of the program, mm-hmm. and I believe yeah they've started building it or mm-hmm. f- somewhere along the building process, mm-hmm. and they've also reached out to students in their local college wow. university um, for help and mentorship. So and that's amazing. I love how you so casually, yeah, yeah, this is instructions and education and transition. And I'm like, wait, we need some of that in our own company. So, and it, actually, it's a real skill, the, it is. what we call the handoff, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So it, whether you're, you're doing your job, but if you're leaving the company or if you're moving on to another project, the handoff process mm-hmm. is very tricky. Mm-hmm. And you guys have exposure to that, which is absolutely wonderful. Um, so, you know, let's talk a little bit about Mrs. Brooks because mm-hmm. I really wish she's like right here with us. Yeah. <laughs> how wonderful would it be? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, so you guys know how it happened. Uh, I may have articulated this briefly three years ago, but basically <laughs> when I was still working at Sapient uh, in two, actually more than three years ago, 2011, mm-hmm. uh, it was one of those rare evenings where it was, well, I guess it wasn't so rare. <laughs> <laughs> It was 7.30 at night, we're still at work, mm-hmm. and I, I personally try to kind of balance work life, you know, mm-hmm. in general. So mm-hmm. that, that was rare for me. Mm-hmm. And I was there, and I think it was a snowstorm going on mm-hmm. outside, and there's still sporadic, there are people in the office. And the head of creative walked over to me and said, you know, Faye, I would love to have you take care of this. Mm-hmm. And he handed me a, uh, his cell phone to for his voicemail. I was like, what, what is this? <laughs> I want to be involved. And, uh, <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> you know, it's kind of like, why are you giving me your cell phone? And what I heard <laughs> was a message. It was such a, the voice was just so gentle yeah. and so genuine <laughs> and from Mrs. Brooks. Hey. Say, hey. <laughs> could you, could you do, actually, I'm, Impersonator. <laughs> you have to do it now. Okay. okay. <laughs> hey, Faye. <laughs> exactly. Oh or at that God. time, she didn't know who I was. Oh. Said, oh. Hi, hi, creative director. <laughs> Insert your name here. We remember we talked about bringing a group mm-hmm. of uh, New North students over to Sapient, have a field trip, mm-hmm. and um, you know, and the creative director looked at me as like. This is going to be great, but we have all these new business uh, Mm -hmm. happening right now, um, and we sort of put it off for a couple of months now. Could you take it on? And I just felt like I was so (laughs) excited because this is something different, you know, and Mm -hmm. to be able to see young people. So fast forward, arranging that trip, and so basically I inserted a bunch of senior creatives to give you guys that presentation. Were you both there uh, for that trip? You weren't? I don't think I was yeah. present. Yeah, I don't think I was in that year. Yeah. Uh, no, I wasn't. Yeah, you oh, were yeah. Here. Okay. <laughs> and um, and I remember one of the <laughs> <laughs> the moments, and, you know, it was obviously a little, little, bit, little bit awkward because I remember we announced to the company to mm-hmm. say that you're going to see a group of high school students. Mm-hmm. But some of them were still like, they didn't read the email, they didn't get the memo, they're yeah. like, <laughs> You know, what are these kids doing here? And, uh, <laughs> that moment I'll never forget is we had, at the, on that day, we had a group of really tough clients coming in. And they mm-hmm. were in, I remember it's called the main conference room. Mm-hmm. So when uh-huh. you first enter, there's like a glass window. There's uh, 20 clients sitting there. Yeah. And it was a heated conversation <laughs> before you guys showed up. And I was really nervous yeah. because, you know, 
But by the time we toured around the office and you guys had to just walk right by them into a、uh, an office on the side, <laughs> and I remember all the clients turn around.、Mm-hmm. And then there were all some of the clients were older. They have kids,、mm-hmm. and they just smiled. Everybody <laughs> smiled, and then they waved before we went on doing our own things. Oh, that's great!、Aww. It was、yeah. just so it was wonderful to me to realize, like you know. And then afterward, I had to connect with people in that meeting. It's like, did it go better? I、yeah. mean, I, did it work out better?、Um, but tell us about if you could both tell us about、uh, the new North Invent Team. You know, I don't know how many years you've been on it. What your experience has been? How were you recruited?、Mm-hmm. And you know that type of things. <laughs> um, was it senior? No, it was our was senior summer. Or like it was my summer junior、before? summer, so your sophomore summer, right?、Mm-hmm. right? Sophomore summer, as in like after you're finished being a sophomore, and then the summer after. Yeah. 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 Yeah.、Wow. So that was. So、yeah. what happened? How did you become part of that class? <laughs> I mean, I I had been taking yeah、um, design, design since freshman freshman year, and Miss Brooks、um, approached us with this. With this, you guys first, right? Oh, yeah. yeah, it was your class who first initiated. Yeah, or was it the class? She,、beforehand? I mean, she did it independently. She found it、mm-hmm. independently, and then she brought the idea to us, and she,、uh, she asked us if this was. Um, something that we would want to pursue, and we're like, yeah, this would be cool. Wow! Not realizing this would be like the, <laughs> the like, highlight of our to... lives. Yeah. <laughs>、wow. um, but after that, we, yeah, we. I don't think we realized the magnitude that it would、Heck、at、no. all <laughs> when we were starting.、No. Tell、uh, us more. I mean, this、yeah. is. I really have to drill into this now because、yeah. I even as an early. My involvement was even before I believe, slightly before Invent Team was a thing,、mm-hmm. and then Mrs. Brooks clearly saw the opportunity, and we're gonna attach some pictures because、mm-hmm. Mrs. Brooks sort of strike me as someone who's like so collaborative with the students. Exactly. <laughs> she wasn't. She was so opposite、yeah. of you know. You know, she's. I believe she's of.、Uh, I don't. I didn't actually ask her what her heritage is.、Mm-hmm. But for me, someone who grew up in Beijing、mm-hmm. and interacted with so many Asian instructors, students,、mm-hmm. her approach is so different, you know, than、mm-hmm. all that I've experienced. And yes, so effective、mm-hmm. and so approachable, you know. So, so. approachable. <laughs> yeah.、Um, definitely. Yeah, I like. We didn't even know what we were gonna invent in the first place. So、um, the whole engineering aspect that wasn't foreseen、um, at, at the beginning. That we'd bring in like other departments, and the way she she just handled it so well.、Um, it was a huge project. Yeah, it was. It was. Yeah, she had. I have, have so much very, respect for what she did. She had to have a very holistic view of what was happening because、mm-hmm. yes, our class was working on engineering and design, but we also had another class that was working on more advertising elements, pamphlets, posters,、uh, cards, that sort of thing,、mm-hmm. and she had to oversee both. And also connect us with the appropriate mentors. Shall we need it? Resources get us the Arduino's that we need. But if they didn't arrive on time, she had to go to and drive all the way to Utah Electronics,、mm. grab it for us, and then come back. And she would be she would always be there because、um, she had to facilitate us working there. So. However late we stayed, she had to stay even later. <laughs> later,、yeah. this is、so. like everything she did for you guys. It's I feel like it's on it, a lot of it self initiated, and it's on top、mm-hmm. of her her literally quote unquote her job. Yeah, she's her she's little, incredible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>、oh, yeah. Yeah. And her kids are incredible. Yeah, I, I saw. Yeah, I saw one of the sons who was like her. She got her kids involved, <laughs> and they were just <laughs> <Yeah> . right. Like her family and、involved. her husband、yeah. was, was helping out with、um, the construction. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you guys? I'm not sure if you guys knew this, and if she like was very vocal about it, but she kind of touched my heart by saying that there's so many students, including those、uh, in her art class, and then possibly on the event team,、mm-hmm. that the parents were、uh, sort of saying, you know, in order to make a living,、mm-hmm. that not in these exact words,、mm-hmm. you <clears throat> cannot major in art. You shouldn't be studying art or design. It's not an option. We wouldn't be supportive of that,、yeah. and she turned that whole thing around、yeah. to you know with someone、mm-hmm. like myself having a career right now.、Mm-hmm. I can completely assure you that what her vision、mm-hmm. it's、mm-hmm. dead on in terms of you know the integration between design technology、mm-hmm. and really ground all of you guys with 
you know, sort of the, the best possible option and path to doing what you love. Mm-hmm. So applause. <laughs> no, that's not applause. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, I, so you you had you used the word. It was like the highlight of your life, the kind of a magical moment. When did you realize that? When you still were when you were still in a new north, or kind of when you realized that when you were in college, like. Um. It was more. <laughs> yeah, the moment. It's the moment that that we shook Obama's hand. I think. That's what yeah, I was like, wow. So, so post uh, post high school, but that experience definitely shaped a lot a lot of the ways that I approach things. I guess now in college. Um, so on top of like she had, she had a great sense of work work ethic. So on top of like working hard and whatnot, she had. Um, this quote that she had about attitude, <laughs> and that <laughs> attitude was like ninety percent of the work. So, and she like on top of that, she was also a very humble person, which I, which I always respected, but came to respect more because realizing that um, no matter what you do, there's somebody else that can replicate it. So mm-hmm. if you if you're not humble in those ways and um, pushing yourself to be better and not you know taking Taking things for granted in that sense um, has definitely become like a core, a core value. Mm. What, what about you, Karen? Like, what? How have you witnessed uh, changes in yourself? Like, especially mm-hmm. after entering the college. Yeah. So, well, the most marked change was that before I was thinking of free ride, <laughs> no. like everybody, <laughs> and then um, after doing this project, I feel like. I've always really liked art, like you said, but I always felt that, you know, starving artist, <laughs> it's pretty hard to proceed down that path. So I've pretty much dropped off art during the high school years, um, focused on academics and stuff like that. But after doing Miss Brooks, after working on the Invent Team uh, project, it was pretty, yeah, it was pretty inspiring to see how design and uh, engineering could come together to form a viable product and to see that all the products that we see right now are like tons of design went into them like lots of yeah the computer and everything like that super well designed like lots of thinking gone into it so I realized you know maybe that could be something that's part of my future path so um and then at working working with Arduinos and programming I thought that was super cool how you could make essentially anything you want out of these little scraps that you buy on the internet mm-hmm. it's like yeah just you know buy arduino tap in some letters and you're set mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like i thought that was pretty magical like how you could just make anything you wanted yeah. and um so that really set my path to becoming uh you know combination of mechie comp sign design i yeah i really want to interface all three but i'm gonna see how that works out <laughs> yeah i think no. this is a go ahead sorry. yeah also like that whole experience, I think, was so unique to us, mm-hmm. and I I think that it's really important that um, other people get an exposure like that and have programs that promote you know like it should, we shouldn't have to get a 10k grant to have an experience yeah. like this you know mm-hmm. I feel I feel like this should be something that's integrated in more high schools and it would be really cool to be involved in mm-hmm. like in programs that would promote something like this I really yeah. think it's it could really change some what if, some perspectives, yeah. What if, you know, we talk about like product mm-hmm. design and packaging mm-hmm. of a product. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, what Mrs. Brooks did is mm-hmm. she basically, I don't know how she breathed out of thin air or like she just <laughs> put something together and she really did. She What she did mm-hmm. in, you know, in my world is just, it's called like basically taking the first step. You know, mm-hmm. she... MVP this invent team and what if we can package that somehow from a teaching and student engagement interactive perspective mm-hmm. and have you guys kind of present mm-hmm. to more high schools all around the country possibly all around the world mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. on how this approach is mm-hmm. it can be called the invent team mm-hmm. you know juniors or other look I don't know we'll find a sexy <laughs> yeah. name for yes. it <laughs> would, it, would it be great you know like for you to be able to impact other students because for other art teachers to start mm-hmm. something from scratch mm-hmm. is a lot harder than knowing something that already works mm-hmm. yeah. and being able to apply yeah. variations and you know mm-hmm. that's the best part though like the the starting from scratch and not yeah, not knowing where you're gonna go exactly or how you're gonna do it yeah but just 
diving in at first. <laughs> mm. And understanding yeah. your uh, creative capabilities rather than, you know, being able to look up how something has been done and then try to replicate that. I mean, mm-hmm. replication is nice sometimes, mm-hmm. but... <laughs> but imitation is step one. Step one, yeah. right. Many artists today, especially modern artists, have no idea how previous, like, master mm-hmm. artists became mm-hmm. ra- master artists in the first place. There's always imitation. Mm-hmm. There is that looking at paintings from hundreds, thousands of years ago mm-hmm. and really dissecting the techniques mm-hmm. right. of previous artists and make it better or, you know, kind yeah. of apply make your it their own. own. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Hey, thanks so much for listening. At this point, hopefully um, you're still here with us. You probably enjoy the conversation, learn a few things. I would mega appreciate it if you could hop over to iTunes, write us a review. Giving a simple star review would take just a second, or a comment review should be just about a few minutes, and your encouragement will always help me get back to recording post-production. Thanks so much. And uh, to keep in mind, there is a part two uh, of the conversation with both Karen and Felege, absolutely fascinating. In part two, we cover about their daily lives. What is uh, their daily routine? Who do they learn from? Who they find aspiring? And and also one quick question is, you know, in their opinion, what could be changed about higher education and things like that. So I hope you really enjoy it, and I look forward to seeing you back at part two. To listen to more episodes of the Face World podcast, please subscribe on iTunes or visit FaceWorld.com. That is F-E-I-S-W-O-R-L-D, where you can find show notes, links, other tools, and resources. You can also follow me on Twitter at FaceWorld. Until next time, thanks for listening.